Derby County found themselves at a key point in this summer transfer window. With just a month to go until they kick off away at Blackburn Rovers, Paul Warren has been talking to BBC Radio Derby about potential incomings and departures. In this video, we're going to be talking about potential outgoings, which players I think could be on the way out, and why I think they could be on the way. Now, it's going to be very difficult to talk about this because there's a lot of players on this list that I personally would keep around the squad. But Paul Warren has to be ruthless. And if he sees better options in certain positions, he has to make the right calls. I personally think there's going to be a lot of talking points from this video. So make sure you do hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell and stay tuned for all of my latest content. If you have not done so already, do hit that subscribe button. And let's get into it right now. So let's start off with a key talking point from the post-game presser. Paul Warren said to Dominic Dietrich that he needs an Ebu Adams type player in midfield. He was asked about Ebu Adams and said that as he knew, no fee had been agreed. Now, obviously, Paul Warren is not going to leak a transfer said exactly what I anticipated and I completely agree with what he said. We do need a a play breaker, essentially, as I like to call him, an interceptor, a ball winner in that midfield, and especially someone next to uh, Kenzo, who played on Friday night, who was absolutely excellent. I think, obviously, we all know that Derby County are going to want to bring Ebo Adams in. Obviously, a few days ago, it was reported that they were close to agreeing a fee. Now, obviously, Paul Warren is not going to admit that on the press. Before any deal is done, medical is finished and contracts are signed. But that just links into bringing in brand new midfield players. Now, if we do go on to the next one, Paul Warren also reiterated to Dominic Dietrich that they do have a long, long way to go in this transfer window. He basically mentioned every area of the pitch still needs strengthening, and that is where this video comes into play. We're going to talk about a range of different positions and players who could leave this club as a result of potential new signings. Now, I think it's really important to discuss defensive strengthening, especially midfield and forwards as well. As he mentions here, three, four, two new goalkeepers, three or four new midfielders, and obviously mentioned strengthening the front line. So if we also then go on to the end one, he also talks about potential departures. Now, no offers are in yet, according to Paul Warren, as per Dominic Dietrich, but obviously there is a potential for players to leave the club. Now, let's get into the players that I think could be at risk of leaving Pride Park Stadium this summer. So let's start off with Dejon Brown. Now, I do not think Dejon Brown will be leaving on a permanent deal. I personally think he's going to head out on a loan spell to League 2 or League 1. I could see him in a Chesterfield front line or a Notts County front line uh, going forward. I think it would probably be a six-month loan deal, in my opinion, then reassess in January, potentially move up to the next league, or potentially bring back, depending on our own personal situation. Obviously, Dejon Brown put up some incredible numbers for Gateshead last year. He was uh, really good when he made uh, little cameo appearances for us as well. Um, and obviously, in Friday night's friendly against Matlock Town, I thought he was absolutely excellent. Um... This video is coming out on Monday. Some players may have moved on by then. Um, but as it stands, Dejon Brown is still here. I do think he's going to finish pre-season with us. But I can see him heading out on loan to open up a space for another number nine uh, to come and join into the squad. Not necessarily to take away from Dejon's pathway, but certainly to improve our squad for the here and now. Now the next player is Darren Robinson. I think Darren Robinson is crying out for a loan spell. I think he put in a really, really good performance against Matlock on Friday. I believe he played about 55, 60 minutes uh, in centre-half and central midfield. I thought he was really sharp. I thought he was really good on the ball and off it. Uh, and he's a player who I think could really get on with um, a League 2 loan spell. Uh, I think he needs the opportunity to prove himself in senior men's football. He's not really had the opportunity to do that at Derby County or under Paul Warren. Uh, obviously, since Paul Warren came in, had much more opportunities under Rooney and Liam Rossini. Um So it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes out. But I could see another League 2 loan spell for Darren Robinson. Maybe potentially Chesterfield or Notts County again. Who knows? But I could see that one happening. Now, this one is one 
I'm sort of not 100% about. I really like Jake Rooney. I personally would keep him around the squad. But he's one of those players who obviously missed a big chunk of last season. Through no fault of his own, obviously. He can't help uh, injuries and things like that. But for me, I could see a world where Jake Rooney heads out on loan to a top-end League One club. Um, so he's going to play every week. I think he's still only 20 years old, so he still has a long, long way to go. Um, and I just think I could see that loan de- a loan deal happening to give uh, Derby County the opportunity to bring in someone who Paul Wall may see as a better player right now. Um, could it be? I can't see him leaving on a permanent deal. I think he's shown too much. Me personally, I'd keep him around the squad, but I can see a world where Jake Rooney heads out on loan and Derby County bring in another central defender who can also play at right back. Now, this is one where I know some might not agree. I know some will agree, but Earlier on in the transfer window, there was interest from, I think it was Charlton Athletic in Sonny Bradley. Now, I can see a world where Sonny Bradley leaves this window. Obviously, for the vast majority of last season, he wasn't great. Yes, he ended the season on a high and put in some really, really good performances. But if we're talking about adding defensive improvements, defenders have to leave. Now, I mentioned Jake Rooney and Darren Robinson going out on loan. Two central, two players who can play in central defence and central midfield and at right back. Really, they all three of them can do well. Two of them can do that, and I think if you take Rooney and Bradley out of that back three depth chart, it opens up space for two new two new signings in that position. And obviously, there's always players who could improve the squad. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that one is handled by uh, Paul Warren and, and obviously the recruitment staff and the departures team. It's going to be really interesting because it's not that I don't think Sonny Bradley can cut the level in the championship. It's that I think there could potentially be better options. Um, if Sonny Bradley stays, I'm not bothered. If he leaves, I'm also not too fussed. Uh, it's one of them where... like. Either way, I could be happy, depending on who the replacements are. So, um, I think this is a deal that could happen. Le- obviously, let me know all of your thoughts down in the comment section. I'm really interested to know which players you think Paul Wong could be talking about when he talks about departures. Now, another one, uh, Connor Washington. Now, I mentioned Dejon Brown earlier leaving to open up the space. Obviously, as it stands right now, we have James Collins... Uh, Jerry Yates, Connor Washington and Dejon Brown who could play in that number 9 role. Obviously Caden Jackson, Mendes Lang, Barquez and Canola as well but main number 9s. Um, and I think Connor Washington sort of fits into sort of the Sonny Bradley position for his role. I think there's probably better options out there. The question is can we get Washington out the door to bring in someone new? Now Washington obviously didn't um, appear in the friendly against Matlock on Friday night um, and spent a lot of last season injured. Obviously, no fault of his own. You don't get injured on purpose, but got injured on international duty. And If you have not done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. We're going to be staying all up to date with all the Derby County transfers and links that are happening over the next few weeks. We're also going to be looking ahead to the Championship and League One campaigns. So make sure if that tickles your interest, you hit that subscribe button and catch me in the next part of this video. I think he made like 20, 30 appearances, but never really got a proper run in the team. Um, and I can see Washington and Dage going out and bringing in uh, two more strikers or, or one more striker and one other player for the forward line. Um, so it's one of those for me where it's, it's less difficult with Washington for me than it is with Bradley because I think... Washington, he was okay at League One, but didn't really pull up any trees. It's like it's one of the reasons why I'm quite surprised why uh, James Collins was given a new deal. Although James Collins was good for us last season, I think he ended as our top goal scorer in all competitions. I just felt we could do better. Now I think we've kept Collins as a squad option, so that if we can't get someone in the door by game one, we have a striker who knows what we want. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one develops. Connor Washington is one who I could potentially see heading for the exit door.
Now, I thought Joe Ward was fairly good in the back end of last season. Obviously picked up that injury, which he had to have an operation for and didn't play for like... I think it was like the last four or five games. But I thought he had a spell at the start of the season where he was really good, got injured, then wasn't really on it, then came back in, played some really good games in that sort of right midfield, right wing role. And I thought he was really good in those games, especially uh, against Portsmouth. And I don't personally want to see Joe Ward leave. I think we have some really good options in that right wing back slot. Um and obviously, Kane Wilson and both Joe Ward can move up to the forward line as well. So, I think we're in a really, really good position with players where the only reason why Joe Ward is even on this list is because, realistically, we've got four players who can play right back or right wing back. And Paul Warner's mentioned defensive improvements and forward line improvements. And Joe Ward sort of fits into both those categories and wasn't really a mainstay in the team in League One. So... I don't necessarily want Joe Ward to leave, but I can see a world where Joe Ward may potentially move on to maybe another championship club or another League One club um, to get game time to actually play football because he might not get all that much here. Now, the big thing while talking about all these players, if we have to keep in mind that there is a nine-person bench, a nine-player bench next season, and... For me, you need versatility on the bench. With nine players, I think you go one goalkeeper, two defenders, someone who can play midfield and defence, two midfielders, two strikers, maybe three strikers. I don't even know what number I'm on now. So it's one of those where if you the more versatile players you've got, the better. And that's where I think Joe Ward could keep himself around the squad because obviously he can play all the way up, all the, way up the right side. Um, could probably play on the left as well. Uh, in the forward line so it's one of those for me where Joe the situation with Joe Ward is very difficult because although he didn't set the world alight in League One he does have ability um, and I think he could impact us in the championship he he was fairly decent for Peterborough when they were in the championship last time so it's one of those where it's a 50-50 a toss of a coin and I and I also take that back to Jake Rooney as well it's a 50-50 toss of a coin whether he stays or goes and we can also move that on to the next two. Now, I like Barkazen. I think he works really hard. I think he's a fairly decent player as well. And obviously, he got a... I think it was a performance-based contract extension. I personally think if he didn't get that, I think we would have seen the back of him. Um, I like Barkazen. I think there is an opportunity for him to stay. But with talk about wanting to improve the forward line still... I think there is an opportunity where he may end up leaving. Um, I think it would be a permanent deal or um, sort of a low or sort of like a free uh, incentive based deal um, moving on. Um, at the moment, I'd keep Barcazen about because then we go back down to three players in the wide positions. And I personally think you need four or five Um so it's one of those where it really depends what options are available for uh, Paul Warren and um, obviously the coach and recruitment staff to bring in. Obviously, there's been so many links over um, the past six weeks or so with the likes of Karamako Dembele. Obviously, if you go all the way back, there's the likes of Sam Gallagher, Jamal Lowe were all linked with the club. Um, now, I'm pretty sure Lowe signed somewhere, but it's one of those where... There's so many options available that if we can open up a space for a Karamako Dembele to be part of our forward line midfield, then I think absolutely we should do. Now, Now, if we do go on to the final player, it is Tyrese Fauna. Now, I thought Tyrese Fauna was excellent on Friday night. I think he formed uh, a really good partnership in that midfield with the... Uh, the youngster, Alex, um, if you've watched my match review, you'll know why I'm calling him Alex. Um, I think Fauna could have a role to play this season, especially with the nine-person bench. But with the talk of three or four new midfielders that Paul Warren is after, I think there's a potential that someone has to leave in that midfield area. Because if we put all our midfielders together, you've got... Ben Osborne, Liam Thompson, Kenzo, um, and obviously Tyrese Fauna. You've obviously got Robinson can play in there. And then Paul Warren wants four more. So that puts you on nine midfielders for 
two, maybe three positions. And a lot of people don't take formations into account during preseason, but I think you should. They're not going to play a formation that they don't intend to use during the season. And on Friday, we played with two formations that have two midfielder sets, double pivots, whatever you want to call them, right? And I think if you've got nine players for two max three positions i think someone is going to be unhappy someone's going to be upset in the apple cart i think it's a bit different if that ninth player if that eighth or ninth player is a a darren robinson a cruz allen who are youngsters who will be playing for the 21s but when you've got someone like tyrese fauna who i think he's nearly 23 24 coming to that age where he's going to want to be playing every week I think it could cause problems. You've obviously also got like the likes of Liam Thompson, who it could obviously be an issue for them as well. You obviously think we've spent upwards of £600,000 on Kenzo, so he's probably going to be one of our main midfielders. We're looking at spending um, up to a million pounds, if not more, on Ibu Adams. Um, he's going to be a main figure of the team. He's If we have Kenzo and Ibu... They're starting, in my opinion. If they're fit, they get through preseason. They're starting against Blackburn. So the question is, are we going to have a third midfielder in there, or are we going to play with a two? Because if we're playing with a two, it's Ibu and Kenzo at this point in time when Ibu signs. Because I can't see him not signing at this point. So it's really, really difficult for the likes of Tyrese Fauna, uh, Darren Robinson, um, obviously uh, Jake Rooney as well. Like you've got so many options in these positions, and like someone like Ben Osborne is going to start, but where is he going to start? Is he going to start left wing back? Is he going to start uh, in midfield? Where does Paul Warren view him? So it's one of those where I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say about the players I've mentioned. I don't think all of these players will leave, but I think these are probably the ones who are going to be on the fringes when we've finished with our signings. And these are the players who I think could potentially leave. Now, now, Obviously, if we do go back to Friday's friendly, uh, Owen Bradley said that Tyrese Fawn has had a brilliant start to pre-season. Now, that could help in this situation. Um, if Tyrese Fawn goes through the next week at Sp in Spain and has a brilliant time out there and uh, puts in some really good performances, it may drop what Paul Warren's wanting in midfield. It also might not. It also make, might make no difference in the slightest. So it's one of those where we really have to see what happens over the next few weeks. It's going to be a really interesting set um, of, of transfers that could transpire, really. So if you have not done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for all of the latest Derby County transfer and fixture news. We are going to be doing Championship and League One videos over probably in about two weeks time as we get to the start of august just before the season starts we're going to do big long a big long preview for both league one and the championship i'm also going to do a big long derby county preview video uh, for you all to enjoy as well so make sure you've hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell smash the like button if you have not done so already and let me know your thoughts down in the comments on the players i've mentioned in this video and i'll catch you in the next video Make sure to go and find me on TikTok, pictured here, and Twitter, pictured here. These are the places where I'll keep you all up to date with all my upcoming videos and my thoughts and feelings around the Formula One and football weekend.